Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California and Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is April 12th and today we're going to go over El Nino and La Nina and the ENSO conditions and our likely transition to a La Nina as we move through the summer into fall and possibly on in through next winter. So what is La Nina or El Nino and where do we measure it? It is across the equatorial Pacific, 5 degrees north and south between 170 west and 120 west. It's known as Nino 3.4 and we also have a couple other regions here but the main one that we rely on here to tell us what conditions we are in is Nino 3.4 but the other regions can also give us a little bit of a hint as to what is to come so now we are in a La Nino watch and that is because we are likely transitioning here as we go through the next few months towards La Nina conditions and we're going to be going over that in the video here tonight so still we are in a moderate El Nino, but things are on the rapid decline. I'm going to show you some graphs on that here starting now. You can see Nino 3.4 really peaked out at some point in November there and stayed pretty high as we went through December and January and kind of the jagged steps downward as we start to transition back towards neutral conditions eventually and then on to La Nina. Now look at this Nino 1.1 and 2 right on the South American coast here. You can see that it's now below average and that's where the water starts to upwell and then it snakes out across some of the equatorial Pacific and that cools down these waters and we transition into La Nina. So taking a look at the probabilities, as you can see, we are in an El Nino right now. Will April officially qualify as an El Nino? Probably. And then we're likely headed towards neutral conditions here as we get through May, June, and, and as we get to, towards July, you can see La Nina starting to rear its head as well. 60% chance by the time we get towards July. And then as we get on to later summer months and fall months, we are very high likelihood that we're going to be headed towards the La Nina here. This is the, the NOAA uh, and ENSO so probabilities here. This was actually issued, I believe, just yesterday here. So we got some brand new data I get to show you. So uh, the, now again, the transition occurring here, 85% chance that we're likely headed towards neutral by April through June with 60 percent chance of heading towards a La Nina as we go through June and August coming up. Now, El Nino had a pretty good run here, uh, about 11 months. I think that March is probably going to still be under El Nino and probably by the time we get to April or June. So it'll be either 11 or 12 months here of El Nino conditions. By the time we get towards uh, May or June, we are likely going to be in neutral conditions and be dealing with our next uh, La Nina coming up here. And you can get these records all the way back to 1950. You can kind of see the past La Ninas and El Nino shown on here. Now, this is the sea surface temperature anomaly. So you can still see we are fairly warm. That's why we are still in a moderate El Nino, but things are changing quickly. As you can see, the upwelling off the coast of South America snaking its way across. And if I put this into motion, you can see it there. You can see it upwelling and then you can see it sneaking out across the equatorial Pacific. It won't be long, but for us, it starts to intrude on our measuring area here in the Nino 3.4 region. And the demise of El Nino will be upon us. Now, taking a look at this, this is December through February. It's this climatological winter, and you can see pretty fairly above average temperatures here. Not incredibly so but across much of the West Coast, but we did have that pretty wet signal here across a lot of California. So pretty El Nino-ish signature, not a bad forecast overall. And if we take a look at what exactly is going on across, at least as far as the atmosphere is concerned, across the Pacific Ocean and the rest of the planet for that matter, in neutral conditions, we tend to get a bit deeper convection out here across the Western Pacific Ocean here. And you can see the equator and there's California and Alaska over here. And this is known as the Pacific Walker Circulation. So what's going on here is we have these trade winds that push the sun heated water out across a lot of the Western Pacific here. It's usually warmer, even in an El Nino year, it is slightly warmer still out here than it is across the equatorial Pacific. So you get some deeper convection out over here. However, during some of the La Nina years, you get even more of that. And that's with this increased trade winds during a La Nina year. As I go here, you can see this uh, prevailing wind, those trade winds push and accumulate that water in the Western Pacific. They're bunching it up. Now you get that vapor and he uh, heat increased convection out there and it changes the entire circulation across the planet much of the time. And that's, again, known as the Walker circulation. Now, La Nina conditions, you can see where that enhanced convection is across a lot of the Western Pacific Ocean here. Again, those increased trade winds. However, during El Nino conditions, those trade winds are weakened here, and sometimes it can even reverse, and you get that deeper convection across some of the Central Pacific Ocean here, and that can really warm up some of the West Coast and bring increased precipitation to places like California, for example. Now, again, this is kind of another look at that walker circulation. This is out over the central and maybe some of the eastern Pacific here where you get the weaker trades. And again, that deeper convection sets up. 
So how do we know if the walker circulation is showing El Nino or La Nina conditions? Well, one of the good ways is to check out the Southern Oscillation Index. So we can take the pressure here and uh, we measure it daily for Darwin, Australia and Tahiti out here across the Central Pacific Ocean. And when the lower pressure here is at Tahiti, we know that we're kind of in El Nino conditions. And the lower pressure is over Darwin, we know we're in La Nina conditions. Now, again, kind of showing you there on this next slide as well, and again, one more time. And now taking a look at this, so past Super El Nino's, you can see how we were in the negative territory there, meaning the pressure was lower over Tahiti. And you can see our current El Nino right now, it didn't get to the status of the 15, 16, or the 97, 98 El Nino, or the 82, 83 out there, but we still had an El Nino here. And you can also see the triple dip La Nina's out there as well, where we're in positive territory. And you can actually see March, 2024, we've crept into positive territory here. So really not referring reflecting El Nino conditions so much across much of the Pacific Ocean. Now, taking a look at what is to come here. So this is April, May, and June 2024. You can see there is a below average sliver here for my Pacific Northwest viewers there across some of Western Washington, Western Oregon, equal chances across the Southwest. You can kind of see this tongue up and across some of the plains here, and then a below average signal across New Mexico and Texas. And you can also see the above average temperature across a lot of the West Coast, kind of equal chances there for maybe Central and Southern California and some of Arizona and Southern Nevada here as well. We'll see how, those, how this works out. But again, the El Nino forecast this year was not bad, pretty good. I mean, because a lot of the West was above average and we did have above average precipitation where we did expect it across a lot of the Southwest USA. Now, taking a look at the forecast coming up here. So this is the climate forecast system. And right now, this is um, going all the way on in towards November. And you can see where we are currently. And you can see the rapid decline of El Nino likely coming again as we go through the spring and into the summer months. And you can really see that tongue of warm water really start to emerge on the CFS model here as we go on into next fall and next winter. And now, why is that such a big deal that when we get that deep convection, will you change the pattern of these Rossby waves? And these are troughs and ridges. And if you've been watching my channel and my daily briefings, you know what kind of impacts these have on the weather. So when you bring these, uh, when you bring the deep convection closer to the Central Pacific Ocean, you change the Rossby waves and the heat transfer across much of the planet. And of course, the uh, the, between the, the gradient between the polar regions uh, and the uh, equatorial regions is known as the mid-latitude uh, mid latitudes, and that's where we get those mid-latitude cyclones setting up. So again, the stronger the gradient, the stronger the storm, and this is how it affects it on a general rule. If you just kind of had to throw an image out there or somebody asking what is El Nino versus La Nina, again, you get the deeper convection across the Central Pacific and you tend to bring wetter conditions here across the Southwest and warmer here across the Pacific Northwest. However, in La Nina, it's different because we have more of a variable jet stream. You have a stronger jet stream coming off of the Western Pacific Ocean here and that tends to build some ridging out here across the Pacific Ocean and we get more of a variable jet stream, which also allows for a more cold air intrusions down into the Pacific Northwest tends to be a bit wetter here as well. Then you can see where it affects, you know, it's drier here across some of the Southwest in towards Texas also. So this uh, this last year, we did get the three, the three tenths of an inch of snowfall here for SeaTac. I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's nothing to crow about or anything, but we did get measurable snowfall and some uh, strong El Nino's, <clears throat> excuse me, frog in my throat, uh, we we don't get much because uh, during the last five strong El Ninos, we'd only had three inches and all those had fallen in one day. And if you go back, you can see the only years with zero snow are El Nino years. If you go back all the way to 1980, you can see them one, two, three, four, five, six with no snowfall. And we barely busted the, you know, that zero snowfall streak there for some of the strong El Ninos in this last one with 0.3. I mean, again, nothing to brag about really. And we have that La Nina coming here. So I can already hear the excitement going with some of the Pacific Northwest mountain uh, snow lovers here. And even some of the lower elevations, you can get some pretty wicked storms here as far as uh, winter storms and some lower elevation snowfall is concerned. And this is something the rainfall, I mean, there are some signals here, especially for like November. So if you can find someone to ask you to bet on what kind of precipitation you're gonna get with this upcoming November here, get your bets placed on uh, the month of November during La Nina. And that's what's uh, coming up here, most likely as we go on in towards the end of the year. So get your bets and you can see 7.12 inches versus an El Nino year and a neutral year. So definitely some favorable signals showing up there. 
Also, a little bit of a windier November pattern shows up here for SeaTac as well. And the temperatures usually favor El Nino quite strongly. We have been just slightly above average here. We've still had some cold periods, so it's not been as you know as warm as some El Ninos can be here in the Pacific Northwest. But as you can see, a La Nina coming up here, and um, once you get into towards December, you start to drop those temperatures off quite dramatically here. So fingers crossed, lowland snow lovers here, or mountain snow lovers across the Pacific Northwest. Now taking a look, <clears throat> at the last 90 days here, you can see that we are dealing with some above average temperature, still kind of a mixed bag here across Washington and California over the last 90 days. This is different than what I showed you previous. The previous was December, January, and February. But if you look at precipitation you know, over the last 90 days, a lot of Western Washington is quite a bit below. You can see some areas are what below 50% across some of the Cascades there, and a lot of areas are between 50 and 70%. So not a great signal there, but you can see the above average conditions across much of the Southwest. A few select areas are below, but for the most part here, even some of Oregon above average as well uh, versus Washington, Idaho, and Montana. It's gonna show up in the snowpack as well. Same thing for British Columbia. And down towards uh, California here as well, uh, you know, another very rainy season was occurred for Southern California, and that shows up here. So pretty typical of El Nino. You can see as uh, far as month-to-month -month comparisons there, we are much above usually when we have El Nino versus La Nina. But as we know for 2022 or into 2023, that is not always the case because we had quite the storm train that was rolling in. It seemed like it went on forever once we turned the page into 2023 last year. So La Nina does not mean no storms for California. <clears throat> Just typically El Nino is a bit wetter. And now taking a look at the European year. So this is all the way back to 2022 here, and this is September 1st. So I've got these all saved here. And if I click through here, you can see how the models have been doing a pretty good job as far as predicting what is to come here. And the blue line is what actually happened. So we're now into February 1st, 2024. And you can see the models have been on to this El Nino's demise here as we go on in through the summer months. And now as we go on into March, you can see we're probably headed towards the La Nina coming up here, but not all of the European models uh, uh, ensembles agree here. You can see some of them are still stuck with neutral conditions. So we'll see how that goes. And I don't know what happened with their graph here on for April 1st. It's kind of jacked up here, but you can see that we are still going to be getting rid of El Nino and we're either headed towards uh, neutral or La Nina conditions. Most models are showing La Nina conditions, however, now, if we take a look at the European seasonal, this is for April 2024. If I put this into motion, you can see May, June, July. You can clearly see the, the cold tongue moving across. But you notice as we get onto the fall, it kind of weakens a bit there. So this is something going on with the European. And I'll show you that compared to the CFS here coming up now. This is June. There's July, August, September, October, November, we're getting a pretty strong La Nina by the time we get towards November, but there is some tailing off as we start to head towards the new year. So that's a little bit unusual there. We'll be watching the models here and, you know, kind of see if they're actually onto something here. So I'm going to show you the Canadian model next. We go June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. A little bit of a tail off here, but more of a typical La Nina scenario there with the Canadian. So we'll see if the models are onto something, at least the Canadian and the, or the CFS and the European and trying to end that or weaken some of those La Nina conditions a little bit earlier than they normally do. But yeah, um, what else? I mean, looking forward to it. I, I like La Nina years. You know, sometimes you, they can produce just some epic winters here in the Pacific Northwest. You can get some really nice lowland snowstorms here. And I always love those. I know not everybody does there, but so maybe I should just speak more for myself. But it does get people excited. It is fun to watch. And as we mentioned last year, you know, it does, because it's La Nina, it doesn't mean California can't get hammered with some of these storm systems as, as well. So, Anyway, um, yeah, what else? I guess I will do my normal briefings tomorrow. Hopefully you guys learned a little something about what El Nino and La Nina is. And maybe you can, you know, impress your friends with some of your knowledge. Who knows? Um, but yeah, anyway, I'll do my normal briefings tomorrow. I hope you guys are having a good day and I will talk to you guys then.